Hi guys, this is Scribbling again with another pen review and today we're going to have a look at a fairly interesting Japanese fountain pen which is the Pilot Justus 95. Why is this a fairly interesting pen? Because it is a semi-flex pen and it has an adjustable nib and we're going to look at that in just a second. Let's have a look at the packaging real quick. Justus Pilot, that's what the packaging says. It's like an outer sleeve that slides off just like that and then you have a perfect copy says Justus Pilot right here once more you open up the thing it's like compare it to my hand a quite large box right here you get a warranty card you get a, some kind of a generic uh, pilot instruction manual with like filling and uh, probably cleaning instructions and all that the pen is covered by a foam uh, plate right here, lays in this uh, styrofoam bed right here, pen here, cap here. It's actually the first time that I see a, 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 a pen being delivered like this, you know, with the nib open, never seen that before. Quite a brave move, however, seems to be very cushioned and protected. A fine nib on the pen, um, if you take that one out right here, nah. comes with a black cartridge as most pilot pens do in that price class. And then a special little leaflet that um, shows you the fountain pen with nib tension adjuster. Um, so like the pen does have like a little wheel there in front and an adjusting plate and if you turn the wheel then that plate shifts back then the nibs becomes nib becomes a little bit softer because the tines are able to spread a little bit more if you shift that uh, adjustment plate here to the front then the lip nib does become a little bit harder because then the tines aren't able to spread or flex anymore that's that put all that stuff aside and have a look at the pen here it is, flat top design, very reminiscent, that's why I have one here, of a Sailor Pro Gear or a Sailor Pro Gear Realo. Here you have a quick comparison, very similar pen, flat top, you know, the gold rings here, okay, the Realo is a piston filler, gold ring back, end, back here at the end, just a, and a quick size comparison. You see, I'll do that later in more detail, but very similar to a Sailor Pro Gear or Sailor Pro Gear Realo. But let's appreciate that pen for itself at the moment now here. Um, uh, very reflective black cap top, so to speak. It's not really a finial because there's no logo on or something like that. You then have a clip, a little bit reminiscent of a sword blade or something like that with like three dashes right here and an engraving. Um, that pen here is um, engraved <clears throat> with sort of a bar barley corn finish, guilloche. It's also available with lines, I think. As said, this here is like the barley corn finish. Really nice, gives the pen a very elegant, nice look. And it's like, you know, here's like the Sailor Pro Gear again. The pen doesn't become that glossy, looks a little bit more made and looks very refined very it's it's not your typical black polished pen but it's a little bit something different i really really enjoy that find that finish super nice you then have like a golden cap band here saying pilot japan justus 95 as with like the many of their larger more pricier pens like the engraving here is then filled in in black cap tapers down here a little bit onto the barrel which is pretty cylindric and just tapers out a wee little bit here at the end as said with this nice barley corn finish here really beautiful and then you have another gold ring right here the clip is pretty tight um, it will work though I had it in pen pouch and stuff like that so that works but it's a pretty stiff pretty pretty tight clip um it's a screw on cap that does unscrew with one and a quarter turns inner cap right here to prevent the nib from drying out never had an issue 
with that pen uh, drying out and then right here you see this fantastic nib it it sort of looks very similar the feet and like the nib shape and all that looks very similar to other pilot nibs like the i don't know um the pilot custom 74 uh, or something like that uh it says f for fine 14 carat 585 a gold nib otherwise a plain face right here and says pilot japan here on the side super cool nib design i must say i really enjoy that and then of course you see this adjustable plate right here that allows um to make the nib harder or softer with with this knurled ring right here at the moment we have it on the hard adjustment because like that adjustment plate is like at the front and if i want to make it soft then i turn this thing right here to the side. This plate will then shift up. If you do that too much, then you will unscrew the uh, section from the barrel. Um, yeah, that's what it looks like. And if I do turn it back to hard mode, of course I gotta turn it that side, then that thing shifts back to the front again. I'll show you how it writes in a minute. I can already say that I don't really find this to be like really a flex pen. So uh, at least in my experience, it doesn't give you very considerable line variation if you don't really press it quite a bit. And that would be like then so far that I would feel uncomfortable pressing it that hard. What it does though, is it makes the, of course, because the tines spread a little bit wider, it makes the ink flow wetter, um, which is in itself a super cool feature because you can actually get like, and I'll show you that with like, uh, the pen here is inked with uh, Hiroshi Suku Take Sumi, which is a really nice ink and a nice black ink. And it, you will see different, you know, shades of black depending on uh, how you have that thing here adjusted. Um, having that said, the grip section is very long, so you can actually does flare out a little bit here down there. You can hold the pen down here or you can hold the pen up a little bit higher. I personally, unfortunately, do tend to hold the pen just right here. I don't hold it down here and I don't hold it up here. I do want to hold it right here and that to me, unfortunately, does make the grip a little bit uncomfortable because even though this knurling here is not particularly deep or sharp you can still feel it just a little bit and when i have it you know it rests right here on my finger with my writing style and then that unfortunately does become uncomfortable for me over time so it's not a pen for me um that's just something that you may need to be aware of, depending on what kind of a grip you have. Um, then unscrew the barrel from the section. Very nice metal threading right here, a rubber O-ring here to make it seal quite nice and tightly. The beautiful large con 70 pump converter has quite a large ink capacity. I already um, wrote that pen almost empty right here. You can also use it with the cartridge, shown you the cartridge in the packet before. Really a beautiful, well-made pen, fantastically looking, just as the grip doesn't work for me. It's a pity. The pen in itself also is fairly long, maybe a little bit too long for my personal preference. It does post and uh, it does post fairly deep onto the barrel, as you can see right here. So even posted, the pen doesn't become massively unwieldy or top heavy or something like that. It's still a very nice balanced writer. Fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, to hold it in the hand, really great. You can use it either posted or unposted because it is plenty long enough and I don't need the added weight. I would tend to write the pen unposted. Let's do now a few size comparisons and then you see actually how long that pen really is. I do compare it first right here to the Sailor Pro Gear Realo, which in itself isn't a very small pen. And then let's throw in my standard size reference pen, which is a Lamy Safari. 
Let's uncap them all and have a look at how they compare uncapped. First, again, to the Sailor Pro Gear Realo. Uh, like this. That's what it looks like. And let's bring the Lamy Safari into the picture right here. Then that's what we get. Mm -hmm. So I think it's fair to say that it's like sort of the length of a Lamy Safari uncapped even a little bit longer. So as said, it is a quite long pen. Now, last but not least, let's do a writing sample with this pen. And for that, I bring the camera a little bit in. Uh, it is, and I can already say that, a fantastic writing experience. It is a beautifully smooth writer. Almost no feedback, uh, as most Pilot nibs don't really have a lot of feedback. They're not like the Sailor or Platinum nibs that are quite feedbacky. These here tend to be very, very smooth. Uh, it's a fine nib, and this is like really a not Japanese fine, so it's like a very fine, fine nib. Uh, pen just dried up a little bit in the course of writing, uh, in the course of reviewing. Okay, uh, now let's just do a, a quick writing sample with the hard adjustment right here. Just wait until the camera focuses again. Yes, there it is. Okay, there we go. Pilot. Justus. 95. With a fine nib. That's sort of regular writing mode. Now let's uh, sort of like press it a little bit. No pressure. A bit more pressure. More pressure. That's what it looks like. Quite a bit of ink that this thing puts down right here, as you can see gets quite wet when you press it a little bit. Now let's shift the adjustment to soft. Bring it all the way back. So, and now I do the same writing again. Pilot Justus 95. Fine. Beautiful writer, I gotta tell you that. And you can hopefully already see that the writing does get a little bit wider and darker, especially, even with no pressure and just con just regular writing. Right, these downstrokes, I don't really use any pressure. It's just my regular writing pressure. But you can see that the downstrokes and are why uh, the strokes are wider and the color does get darker. That's is especially cool, I find, if you have like inks like J. Herbin Gris Noir that are typically very light and pale inks. Um, if you just like put the adjustment blade back, gives you that little bit more of ink on the page and you'll get like an ink that is very legible and readable. So now let's do the same uh, sort of like a flexing exercise here again with a little bit of or like no pressure at first, of course, a little bit more pressure. And now a lot of pressure. That's as far as I would push it. And I'll just do the same thing very quickly again with the adjustment to hard to show you the line with comparison. No pressure, but you feel that it's harder. More pressure. A lot of pressure as much as I would be comfortable going and uh, yeah I do think that there's basically no or just a very very marginal uh, difference in flexing and as said I wouldn't be comfortable to push this nib all that far um, because I don't want to spread the tines but what you do definitely get out uh, is a darker line and a little bit more cushioned writing experience, a little bit more bounce. So um, uh, last but not least, price, of course, this pen costs like 
around 280 euro something like that a little bit depending on where you get it from japanese pens are often uh, trickily priced depending on whether you buy them in the us or in europe or in japan 280 euro that's around the price that you pay for the pen in europe i think it's an okay price for such a fabulous pen and as said it is a fantastic writer don't buy this pen if you want to buy a flex pen buy it if you want a you know something to play around with, something unique, something that looks really cool, a great writer. And if you want to play with ink flow a little bit and get a little bit a, you know, uh, more ink or less ink onto the page and like, you know, that tad of line variation, let's say from a Japanese fine to a Japanese medium uh, in regular writing. But then as you'll see right here with flexing, um, ink still wet on the page a little bit. With flexing, it's not... Uh, that significant the difference that you can can achieve so yeah the pen will certainly give you line variation but yeah as said it's it's not a full flex pen um guys i hope this review of the justus 95 pilot fountain pen was useful to you and i'll gladly see you at the next review ciao ciao